And welcome back everybody, a grumpy old guy gaming here with the final episode, I can't believe I'm saying that already, the final episode of the Learning to Die Less series where I play that tall boy right there, the Wave Master Dionysius, in an attempt to learn how to play at least adequately as a Wave Master online in .hack Fragment playing here on my PC. How's everybody doing today? This is captured footage from the previous day. I am adventuring with the Wave Master Izumo. We met him as well as the Blade Master Zeneda in the last episode. Feel free to go ahead and check that out. Be warping into the field here. This makes our tenth installment. And along the way I've uh Figured out some of the ins and outs here, figured out what works, what doesn't work. Had a few lucky breaks along the way. This field is an absolutely beautiful field, by the way. It's evening, it's a, it's a starry looking night with full moon with the snow covered field. It's a beautiful ethereal look to it. Get ambushed by a couple rockheads here, no problem for a couple wave masters like us. I'm hitting Ru Rom, and I believe that is Gan Zot being cast. Just raise a big old tree up underneath your opponent. And take out a dust curse there with relative ease. This was the last of three dungeons we ran last night. Uh, game is a ton of fun on its own, cannot stress enough though how much better it is in a group, even if it's just another person to watch your back be able to res you when you get those unlucky one-shots from just off-screen. Just tremendously fun. Now, I'm going to take a moment here while we're clearing out field portals and tell you the series, and more specifically, its importance to the channel. Um, I've actually been talking for the past year plus about starting a YouTube channel, and I, I've, I've got chronic cold feet when it comes to creative endeavors. I'm not the most creative person, I'm sure the people um, listening in past videos have noticed that. And I just find more reasons not to do things than to follow through with them. Get through the battle there, had to pull a data drain out. Um, so, when I started playing Fragment, it was sort of a dream come true. Um, again, a game I had heard about years ago when the whole God hack thing was probably at its peak in the United States. And it was a game I always hoped we'd see come this way. Never did. There I got trapped by a symbol, and another monster dust curse comes up right by that symbol. Uh, pick up a white cherry here. But I had been talking and talking and came to the decision that it was time for me to try something. I'm not the most computer savvy person on the planet, and I'm sure not the most self confident. But this was something I wanted to try, and something a bit out of my comfort zone that I still found interesting. Hopefully I'm improving along the way. Hopefully it's entertaining. Um, so, personal story over, we'll get back to the action here. Um, go ahead, pop the symbol again, nap Juka. We've both got CB, uh, speed bursts and hit point regen going right now. I've got a wood element boost, and Izumo's got a fire element boost. Take out that portal with relative ease. Triple sevens there on the uh, Gamzot damage. can guarantee you, if you're seeing damage over 300, it is Izumo on that. I am, however, picking up some consistent experience with these Ru ROMs. Just high percentage spells. Um, one of the quirks of Fragment's experience is that you don't automatically get shared party experience. You have to uh, d 
damage, tangibly damage the enemy uh, to get experience upon its death or rather disappearance. I suppose that's an important delineation since, you know, many here are things. Take out a shield man there. So just having a spell like that is vital, I think, to wave masters. Get those quick hits in, and that way if your party mates can finish them off, you still get the experience online. Uh, we both got hit with debuffs to our physical accuracy, which is probably the least worrisome thing a wave master can be hit with. So we're not exactly too concerned about popping any sort of consumable item to get rid of that. Coming up on a trio of portals here arranged in a nice neat little triangle, and also happen to be arranged next to a uh, pair of symbols there. So we're just going to go ahead, go spell heavy, take those out. Trap chest is dropped. I was kind of on uh, item collection cruise control as far as this goes. More than happy to let Izumo pick them up. Uh, was a long day yesterday, just kind of be happy to be playing. There, you just saw a sick hit for 1800 damage. Notice the battle is still ongoing, so I realized I hadn't missed it. Made my way around to help him out with those rock heads. And now working up to the third of those three portals. Kind of crazy to look back at this series and look at the progress. We were doing so bad in the early levels, I believe. And there's level up to level 11. Get a quick congrats and uh, tip of the cap, so I'll thank him for that. Uh, it's tough to believe, but I, bl I do believe in the first video I was doing so terribly, I wound up recording offline footage of going back to the tutorial field just to clear out the two goblins that still spawn there for the sake of a video. Also, technically not my finest moment, I hadn't figured out how to get the audio recorded and dubbed onto the video, and I'm not exactly going to say I'm confident in my voice recording, uh, my voice has always sounded a little weird to me, but then I was really like, no, nobody wants to hear that. Um, Hopefully it's not as bad as I'm making out to be. If it is, feel free to tell me in the comments. I'll probably agree right along with you. Coming up on another portal here. Grab a white cherry. The white cherries and the, um, as far as I know, actually non-existent in the game purple cherries uh, were featured in the first episode of Dot Hack Sign. I remember watching. My buddy kept telling me about the series, and I wasn't, I wasn't gonna watch it. I wasn't gonna watch it. Eventually, I watched it, and it was the episode with Sukasa uh, watching the baby Grunty. Don't want to get anywhere near spoiler territory here, but that's where my love of this series started. And um, it's safe to say, had I not actually sat down and watched that episode, I would not be playing Fragment here today. Finish things off with a little fireball there. Nice to get last drop in as we clear the field portals and start making our way to the dungeon. I believe it was episode 4 for this series was the first learning to die less with commentary. So this makes my sixth talking episode with the Wave Master. It's been a fun ride along the way. I can say that this has probably been one of the more fun gaming experiences I've had in recent memory. Uh, seeing the community, just the people who play this regularly, discuss it regularly on Discord, it, it's a riot. Checking out other people's work on it, and hearing about what items they're collecting, what they're going out for rares. Here we go up against the scorpion tank, and I'm just so entrenched in Ru-Rom, I hit a water element monster with a water element spell. 
all's well that ends well there, as the finishing blow is dropped by way of a Ganzot. Come to this little T-shaped room, up against another Scorpion tank. This one fares a little bit better, gets a bit of damage on me. Not too concerned about it. One, because it only took me down to half, and as far as Wave Masters go, I'm sitting at 240 hit points. Rather beefy boy, even though I'm kinda just wearing cheesecloth as far as armor is concerned. Secondly, unlike most of my playthroughs on here where I'm soloing and a one-hit death is a thousand experience lost and a level down, I've got uh, another character with me here, and that other character uh, can revive mine if I should happen to fall. Vice versa, I'd be watching their back if something bad would happen. Got our speed charms up again, um, just motoring through. Not the biggest fan of speed charms when I'm soloing, because I kind of want to enjoy the ride, but in online it helps a bit, and again, we got through three dungeons in one night. Can't complain with that. Also like seeing some of the little differences because different versions of the game, not to get into too many specifics, um, but different versions of the game are still around, so if you notice, um, my character is has a little English speech bubble coming up when I hit to enter the next room and it comes up in, I believe, Japanese uh, for Azumo's character. You see just little variances like that, and I don't know about anybody else, but just little quirks like that just sort of make the thing feel more of like a breathing entity to me, just that those quirks exist. Also, I know it's an unorthodox thing, but I, I kind of applaud the sense of, you know, the way this is set up with the area servers and only three people being able to connect at a time. Originally, I thought it would have been cooler if Root Towns acted as just that and let maybe, like, ten people in, and then you could party up from there. But, I realized that the Chaos Gates may be a bit problematic then, plus slow down with all of those people moving through in tight spaces. After all, this was a PS2 game. Another thing that's tough to believe for some is this game is already 15 years old. We hit a treasure room here on the second floor. Happy to say this dungeon was a bit longer than the other two. Uh, part 1, the video that we put out, um, this video that we're doing today will be airing on Thursday, so Wednesday's video, part 1 of the commencement party. Uh, both dungeons ended after two levels, and hilariously, I believe the second dungeon we ran was a level 9 dungeon with the fewest portals I have seen ever. Not a single encounter on the first level, so this one was a bit more action-packed as far as that goes, and I was certainly welcoming that. Good news in the way of a level up. I like these snowy area dungeons with the little lava pits in them. That to me seems sort of fantasy feasible. Like they're using the lava as an internal heating source to keep out the cold. Also again, love the contrast in color between that bubbling like orange lava lake, and it's not really bubbling, but vivid imagination, please bear with me, and the blues on the wall. Going down to floor three here. And we run into Mimics. Probably one of the most annoying creatures a Wave Master can run into. And poor Zumo is once again continuing their streak of getting confused at just about every opportunity. I was either on a Golden Luck run, or my Magic Evade was in Overdrive when it came to the Mimics. I don't believe I was confused once throughout the, the dungeon. Certainly more than enough opportunities as we come up against yet another multiple Mimic battle. This time we take him out handily, and uh, 
another thing that I've always found sort of humorous is when you defeat a mimic and it turns into a chest. At least it changes color in a trap chest, but when a mimic turns into a normal chest in the exact same spot, you just have to stop and think for a second, um, is it still a mimic? Obviously it's not, but again, just something that tickles my fans. So I did avoid the confusion, but I got skill drained on that one attack, and when you're a skill point heavy class like Wavemaster or something like that can really make it a long combat for you, or at least a resource intensive one, as you try to find every excuse possible not to burn that mage assault if you can avoid it. get through again, I'm gonna race to the top here and grab me some treasure. A uh, set of hiking gear. More equipment that Wave Masters can't use. Here we go up against some dust curses and another mimic. Unfortunately, once again, Izumo is confused. I take the business end of that Earth Staff for a couple times. There I go for a uh, restorative, and I accidentally fumble with my fingers a bit. Accidentally open up the chat commands, and I welcome him back for no apparent reason. So plus five to me for uh, situational awareness there. Of course, anybody who knows me knows that that would have been an auto-chat mistake. There is no way I could type that fast. Take out these mimics in short order. Again, Azumo unfortunately getting hit with another confusion. This time we actually do get the consumable off successfully. Move into this side passage. Decide to go for a quick heal first. And not really that necessary immediately as it's a treasure room. So we'll check out the other branch of this long tea room here. And it leads us to a small room with a pool of water in the middle. And then our stairs down to floor number four. This will be the effective wrap-up on learning to die last. Um, not our wrap-up for recording Dionysius the Wavemaster. As as we've come to level, I've I've sort of fallen back in love with playing casting classes in these style games. Uh, my main account of Blade Master is still probably my favorite, but I do believe this has supplanted my long arm. There you see. I actually went to smash that pot on the off chance that I pick up a consumable, and I whiffed. I accidentally targeted the door and said, you know what, we'll just roll with it. Go ahead and speed charm back up, and then get myself to the door. Uh, continuing on with Fragment, as I still plan on it being a rather heavy part of my recording schedule, I will be doing my best every week to at least upload a dungeon run a week. Um, I've been doing the Weekend Warrior where I run my Blade Master account in a random dungeon for no apparent reason other than to just goof off, have fun, and whack at things with swords. Uh, on Sundays that seems to be the best time for me to upload. Also, with the prevalence of Fragment Friday and trying to raise awareness, I'm going to do my best to upload at least a quick dungeon run there. Here, we're going to go into the side passage here. Come up in another one of these sort of arc-shaped rooms and come up against a couple fiend veneers. Take them down in quick succession. Usually you tense up a little bit seeing two of them and you say, can I finish them off before one revives the other? They're not such a big concern. Here we come up against a small V-shaped room. It's got a side door and a door opposite. 
we will be going in the door opposite first, the whole way on the other end of the room, and there's a long dead end corridor with a portal near the end. Portal opens up to a couple mimics. Take them both out. And pop a mage of soul. Time to go back and check out that side door. Treasure room there, and then a room beyond. Which leads the stairs down to the fifth floor. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, it will be Thursday by the time this video hits. Hope you're all having a wonderful Thursday. Um, jokingly at work, since I, I tend to work alongside a bunch of D&D players, I will say since Tuesday is Taco Tuesday, Thursday must be Taco Thursday. Um, please let me know if you actually understand that joke. Mimic and a Mimir both taken down just about simultaneously, again just marveling at the obscene damage of Ganzok. Uh, the single target, single strike spells are impressive, especially when you start getting those more detailed graphics. Not my personal style as I tend to go for safe hits like the uh, Brahm spells, the little elemental tornadoes and their damage can stack up tangibly as well, but if you look back in the previous video, there were some insane damage numbers hit there on the Thunderfield. I think the biggest one was up over 2,000. Here's the final dungeon portal, and it's a doozy. We've got multiple Meneer, we've got Mimic. Um, gonna try and help with that Fiend Meneer there. There's a Rockhead that I completely missed until this moment, just sort of tucked away there in the little corridor. Usually there's a chest there, judging by that little blue dot, there's one there as well. Finish off the Mimic with a Fire Spell, and uh, now there's not much to do but collect the treasure. At least that was my intention, and then I got turned around, and I have to embarrassingly make this little run over. This the door there, and there it is. There is the treasure chest. Izumo, more than generous, a lot, um, gave me this chest, and I was able to pick up fishing gloves and two resurrects. Thank him for that, and I ended up trading him the fishing gloves. Um, I don't know if they would help him right away, as I don't believe fishing gloves are armor that Wave Masters can equip, but it can certainly help him trade into better armor. Um, I'm a big proponent of looking to trade equipment. Between solo runs and playing offline, you'll always have the chance to get better equipment, so if I could in any way help another player, always happy to do it. And I hope this series has been entertaining and hopefully informational. Um, let me know down below if this has helped you at all playing Fragment or perhaps convinced you to give Fragment a shot. Um, if you see me on, feel free to say hi and party up. This has been a Grumpy Old Guy Gaming thanking you for watching the Learning to Die Less series.